following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour on this 12th day of uh, January, almost halfway through the month. Very interesting. Ah, oh, what a fascinating market. Well, we'll get to all the nitty gritties, but first let me say thank you to great programming. Nice calls this morning. Uh, really interesting shows. Of course, tonight you've got Larry Pesaventos. Uh, webinar. Gee, I'm hoping I'm getting going to be back in time. I've got my annual trip to the New England Auto Show. I always do this. It's got nothing to do with buying cars or selling cars or anything to do with cars. It has to do with the economic environment and what the what the show is telling me about the thinking in the auto industry. I suspect that this year there will be not such a great emphasis on the cost efficient cars. This is the year that you start to see cars where they talk about speed and design. This is the period, this is the part of that second half of the coda phase where you start to see automobiles. Um, I get this is the period of excessivity. So you'll start to see where the front end or the rear end, if there's any minor damage, costs you about a third or more of the car to repair. It's the impractical side starts to come, even though sometimes it's very beautiful. Um, this is where we are. I suspect I'll be reporting tomorrow about that. Now, I'm hoping I'm back in time for Larry's uh, webinar tonight. should be an absolutely fascinating webinar. He does such terrific uh, programming and uh, uh, work with his uh, butterflies and gardens and his predictions. So I'm looking forward to it. Otherwise, I'll have to listen to it on archive a little belatedly, but... Um, Anyway, if you have a chance, please check out Larry's webinar tonight, and you'll see it on the front page of TFNN. I believe it starts at 6 o'clock. Well, here we go, 6 o'clock Eastern time. The Dow is down 176. Let me, let me just show you the E-mini right now, down 20. You see this cup formation? You see the falling axe? It couldn't really break out above it. The, the Chapman Wave drop bucket formation where you make a double top. It looks like a U, a U or a cup. And the right arm starts to fail as the technicals are very poor. I've been talking about that for days and days in my webinar the other night. I said, you've just got to be real careful when you get fading technicals on the right side when the price seems to try, it tries to hold uh, on, on the left side. And uh, that's something we're going to be looking at. Now, what's really interesting is the weekly charts are still very positive in the Dow, the S&P, et cetera. Here's a 120-minute chart. It failed to make the cup formation. It failed to hold the 200-period exponential moving average, that orange line. And just for those of you who are trading, we uh, had some really terrific uh, moves in the E-mini. Let me just do this. I'm going to squeeze it. That was a peak F top. It looked – let me just show you this here, how it looked um, earlier today. It, was, it looked like, gee, what a perfect peak F top. And just a very gentle move down, 200-period moving average, that blue line kind of tests it, and it hugs around, keeps going, and all of a sudden it, it treats it as resistance, breaks down, has a nice move to the upside, goes peak A, B, and then C1, C2. And what I mentioned in the den early this morning, often, every day I try to post in what I show my subscribers, this is the 120-minute chart, the daily, and I've included the weekly to show all the different parameters. And then I, I included this to say that the 10-minute chart needs to break above 2266. That's the, that's the area. Well, the high was 2266.00 twice. They made a peak C1, C2. Look at the technicals. Remember what I talk about? That's where technicals are so important. The reason why I spent a year and a half doing all that practicing as if I was practicing tennis or something with, without a racket, just trying to get the strokes um, is because I wanted to learn how to memorize within my mind how the MACD and the stochastic would be forming at that particular point. So it makes it much easier. I'm going to show you now in the Dow exactly what that relationship is. But look what happened. Failure, 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 and then kaplop. Look at the volume, huge volume to the downside. Now, is this a bit of a selling climax on the short term? Hey, 
We're going to be look at that, looking at that right now. Why? We, we want to move this 120-minute chart away. Got a bunch of uh, questions coming in, but let me just deal with this. You know, the first segment I like to do an analysis. So here we go. The Dow, and I'll do this uh, to show you what what we're looking at. Within the context of what I showed my subscribers this morning, the 120 minute chart for the, for about a week now, I've been showing maybe more. I've been showing it the two two charts of the 120 minute chart of the Dow. It's actually three altogether if you look at my uh, overview chart. But anyway. What I do with this one is I don't have a MACD or stochastic. I have some other techniques, but the most important technique I have is the Chapman Wave 5. That is a complete, it is, um, how can I put this? I use the Elliott Wave as a concept, always had some trouble with the Elliott Wave, and over the last two and a half, maybe three or four years even, I've just been finding that Elliott Wave there's a certain complexity to it that should not be there. And the Chapman Wave methodology seems to resolve that. That's what a lot of people have been telling me who use Elliott Wave. The Chapman Wave seems to clarify those fuzzy areas. Well, I've been using something that I call Chapman Wave 5. <clears throat> you can see how many times it's worked now. Sometimes, I have to be absolutely honest about this, sometimes I put the 5 in and then I have to move the numbers a little bit. But until we do an action, an action and a reaction to the 5, <clears throat> that's where I put the down arrow and I say, this is where I think it is a five. It's still a work in progress. I'm only talking about it as something that I do because people have asked me about the fives. Here's the, here's the thing. We did the five to the downside at the Dow uh, 19,718 back on the 20th of December. Then we ran up in one, two, three. I moved this three to there thinking it could be a five. Turned out it was a five. And now we've got one, two, three. And I showed you this morning that we, we didn't have this candle, obviously. And we were right there. It looked like it could break out. And I said, I, everything looks like it's a five. We're staying in our short position on the Dow. We have a, 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 a short position on the Dow. And um, this is the five. So now we've come into an area until this takes out decisively 19,718. This pattern here is still a viable pattern, although I think it's less and less likely, but we've got bank earnings tomorrow. Anything could happen then, right? So this is what we call the Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. We've seen it in the Dow monthly chart. Look, here's the Dow monthly chart. There's that stalk leg. Look how beautiful it's been acting. Still in leg D in the neck phase. So this is what we're looking at here in the daily because um, it negates, if we take out the body of this long oval pattern, instead of going up above 19,999 to touch 20,000. Remember, I've been talking about it. I spent a whole bunch of time yesterday saying, in my work, it is this whole 19,900s area. It's got nothing to do with 20,000. It is the 19,900s that has formidable resistance. We've seen it on the doorstep of going to 20,000. It hasn't been able to do that. Once it takes out 20,000, it's done. We can start moving even higher into the 20,000. But at this particular point, it's more an arch formation that we're looking at days young. We're not even two hours into the day. I'm not going to talk about this as if it's a closed deal. I'm just saying right now, the level to watch at 19,789 is 19,717. You take that out, it negates this pattern and says no. Lower lows and lower highs, um, regardless of what happens tomorrow. Basil Chapman, I'll be back. Dow's down 165, S&P's down 18. We'll be right back after these important messages. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank.
Bank is a member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. All right, folks, let me just finish this quickly and then we're going to discuss it uh, as E slash B. All right, this is Sony uh, Corporation ADR trading at 30.70. Notice that it's up today, it's up, it, uh, up 26 cents. It's funny that I was asked about this because I looked the other day. I've, I've had uh, some uh, discussion about Samsung uh, with, with uh, someone recently. Uh, it had nothing to do with the stock, had to do with the company. And I have a seven phone. I've had no problems with it. It's, not, it's the Galaxy, but it's not the one that was recalled. I did have one initially that was just horrible. It's the exact same thing. Battery was getting so hot, etc. Um, and... At the same time, by chance, I just happened to be looking at SNE, which is Sony. And not only that, I was looking at when I was at Best Buy the other day, just kind of per perusing, looking around. Um, I, it was very interesting because I'm saying to myself, gosh, I, I have one television, a very old one. It's just, it's perfect, does everything well. It's just Sony, and I'm like, oh, I mean, I don't even know how long ago it was. Um, so... And it's still working just fine. And everyone who comes in and says, "Why well, you still got one of those old-fashioned... Uh, you know, I say, yeah, well, it does the job. Um, and I'm Sony, there was a time where you could take a Sony uh, instrument, anything Sony. I remember the recorders when I was in the music business. Um, you, the Sony recorders were just... They made these little miniature uh, tape recorders that were just fantastic. They were professional models. And then they just kind of disappeared. So I, I, I'm perusing the stocks the other day, and by chance, I think I can't remember how I even hit SNE, which which is Sony, the symbol. And I looked at it and I thought, hey, that is very interesting. It's making this kind of pattern that has a chance, no, it's an inverted V. It's not the arch formation. It is a more powerful one. But then I completely forgot, and then I was asked about it, and I'm looking at it, and I'm saying, wow, it made a low at 27 72, this person evidently is in in the 28th. That's fantastic. And it's trading at 30.68. I like it very much. And in this environment, the MACD and Stochastic are very strong. The reason why I wanted to bring it before I went through the other numbers is I didn't want to forget about it. Um, why? Because in this context of this particular market, the rotation through sectors, the rotation through uh, countries, the rotation through um, currencies, we're seeing the, the works, and it's really exciting. That's why Larry's uh, um, 
webinar tonight is going to be so exciting because he goes through all these different uh, aspects. Now, what I'm looking at here is that Sony's looking very good. It's had one, two, three huge gaps, huge, huge gaps to the upside. And as a result, I think that um, if I had to recommend for you to go in here, it's because the longer term is actually starting to look quite positive. And because of Samsung having so many problems in so, so many departments, and boy, they produce fan fantastic equipment, um, electronic equipment especially. Um, it's just a pity that they, they, yeah, things like this are happening. So I'm just going to say to you, I like it very much. Congratulations, first of all, in getting in. It's, uh, and I'm not sure what the technique is that you use, but certainly it's the technique de jour. It's, it's um, the one that's doing the job, that's current. And the other thing I'm going to say to you is, within this context of the fan, like like GAN fan theory, I'm not going to use GAN fan theory theory here. What I am going to use though is, let me just do this, that you can see there's some equidistance between these trend lines, and that's saying that the support level that was made um, this week at 28.74 is very strong. The nine period moving average in the weekly chart at 29.46 is very strong. So if there is a pullback and it goes towards between 30 and 29.20, somewhere in that area, someone remind me, I'd like to look at it again because I'm not sure it's even gonna get there, but if it does get there in this environment, when it's an alternate area, uh, let me just check the Nikkei, let's see what it's doing there. Nikkei, well, the day's young. Whoops, Nikkei is not, the, not your benchmark. It made that um, uh, double camel, double hump, peak uh, F right there, E and F, as if that weekly chart, remember back in 2007, October, we got that in the weekly chart, and then it turned down very, that was it, that was the top, um, and that's exactly what's happened here. No, no connection. So Sony, uh, Sony is acting very well. Uh, the support level is the right between the 200 period moving average in the daily, that's the smooth moving average at 2971 and 2943 where the nine period moving air is just about to cross the slow moving average of 2944. I like it, but I would say that if you're already in, you've got a good comfort factor. If you're going to start a position now, you can only just start the position, the real position that you want to be testing to see if it's got the support is if there's a pullback under 30, that's where you want to kind of be looking at it. Hope that help, helps you and um, that, congratulations. So now what I'm going to do is this, I had a question about the euro, we'll, we'll treat it as part of the ongoing analysis that we're doing. EUR USD, here's the 10 minute chart. Um, it's kind of balancing within a range of 1.068 and 1.068 about two and one point, this low that was made right here at 9.40 this morning, 1.063. So this is going to be very important. Now, I just wanted to do to show you the shorter term. Now I'm going to say, let's go through the dollar. The dollar right now is DXY. This is the, I, when I was interviewed by Tom just recently, I said, there's an expanding wedge formation in the dollar. It has already made a peak E in the daily chart. It's already in leg D in the monthly chart. It's the weekly chart that has gone to a G slash C and everything about it so far has the correct characteristics that I like to look at to consider that it's a G. Now, what does that mean? It means that the dollar is taking a breather. It's had a fantastic move, but basically since mid-December, it's gone slightly higher and slightly lower. There's going to be a big difference in the character of the dollar, today's Thursday, uh, today's Thursday, if tomorrow, Friday at four o'clock, the dollar closes under this trend line right here, if it closes under, I I'd said to my subscribers to my opening call this morning, under 100, the dollar's got a different characteristic. It has now made a top that could be called shorter to intermediate term. Still fantastic looking in the monthly chart. Weekly chart is very good, not as good as it was, still 84%. MACD's still holding. I want to see where it closes. And then the following week, a week from Friday, do we have a holiday Monday? When is that? Uh, maybe the following week. Then what I want to see is if the next week the dollar is able to close above 102.30, that's saying high level consolidation, the rectangle that I've drawn in here most probably will have to be moved up like that. But in the meantime, back at the range, just, just say that it's in the consolidation phase. I, I don't have any questions in my analysis to say 
that a close above 104 is just something completely different. It's going to smash the other currencies, and the dollar is going to scream to the upside. Gold is going to be pulling back sharply. But if it just chop, chop, chops around you, it's having a high-level consolidation. If it closes under 99 in January, that's going to that's going to change the character of the monthly. Monday's a holiday. Good, thank you. Oh, I needed that. Um, now let's go to um, the IWM. Yes, the question was, is that a peak C1, C2? No, it's a peak 1, C1, C2, C3. I spent quite some time in my webinar in the one, two, three, or all three series talking about it because I suspect it's going to become as the euro did when Peter used to call it and we spoke about the peak C1, C2 in the euro dollar currency pair a long time ago and it worked so beautifully. It became a part of the Chapman Wave methodology. And what we're looking at here is that the uh, IWM, if it takes out at 133.83, if it takes out 132. Set candle 132.50. If it, it doesn't have to even close under it, if it takes it out, that's a real problem on the shorter term. I'll be back, Dow's on 156, SP's down 16. We'll continue with the analysis, and a lot of questions came in. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. So let's go to this. This is the JDXJ. This is the Junior Gold Miners ETF, trading at 37.27. So the question is, Basil, yet again, unable to call. Sorry. <clears throat> Could you please give wave counts for GDXJ? I have alternate accounts in several time frames. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh, wait a minute. Did I miss something? Is that an E? That might be an E. 
Yes, yes, now I can see it. 3247 and 3250. So it's D. <clears throat> so there's no alternate count. <clears throat> I've got an E. And the MACD is steadying at 89, uh, MACD is strong, stochastic steadying at 89%. So, so far, that is a very good sign. <clears throat> I'm not sure this can be an instant restart. Could be, but my thinking with the 200 period moving average is that the dollars actually can have a little bit of a balance and that gold could give back a little bit of the gains. Let's just go through that. So leg A in the weekly chart, and that's really my big thing this weekend when I get send out all my my, I'll be back at sending out a lot of charts this weekend. Couldn't do it last weekend because I was away. Uh, grandson's uh, birthday party, not birthday, but birthday party. So we were just celebrating there. Um, now what I'm looking at is this. In the weekly charts, oh, yes, thank you for sending me that email. I had it already, the, bro the broccoli email, and we just got so busy, I completely forgot until I got home, and I said, oh, I saw the note right on my computer. It says, check out the broccoli uh, uh, commercial. I'll see if I can do it again. Um, <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll send it to him. Yes. Uh, so now we're looking at GDX. Until the GDX, this is leg A in the gold. All right. And uh, look, here's the gold. Whoops. Here's the gold. GC. Leg A. Very strong leg. We've seen A's before that fail. That's the characteristic of a single, a strong single leg A to the upside. What you want to see is some pullback at a peak D. We haven't got a peak D. We're in a leg D with a left side, right side price time. It's beautiful. Um, but the 93% stochastic says, yeah, you might pull back, but that 1,180 area at the nine period moving average, if you even get there, that's very strong support. That's number one. If you're looking at GLD, <clears throat> That's still in leg C at 114.48, um, up 98 cents. And that's saying the 112.35 nine period moving average is good support. But I'm using this 50 period just to experiment a little bit. Uh, it's the 50, I'm sure, uh, input. Yeah, it's a 50. In fact, I'm about to get rid of it. I, I find 50s <laughs> don't do much for me. All right. Um, anyway, the 50s, uh, forget it. So 112.36. And it's in leg C. It should still go to a D. This is that leg A. And I'm saying to you that how A corrects maybe next week or the following week is going to be imperative in telling us whether or not you're going to just get a, an arch formation in the monthly chart in gold that goes to a lowercase h that is a, then a lowercase m and it just goes sideways between a fantastic trading band where you can trade the gold stocks for beautiful profits, get out of them, maybe go to the DZZ and then go short at, at, towards the top of the range. Look, the DZZ is in trough A, B, C, like the gold, is the inverse. And this is the two times short. Made a peak F right there, um, at about 7.18 or something. And now it's down, about to touch the 200 period moving average at 6.25, 6.16. And there's your peak D pullback in the two times short. So all of this is what we're going to put into the package. Uh, we, we're holding gold stock. We're holding um, the GDX. Um, I, I like the position so far. And here we go. So now let me go to the, uh, we did that. I just want to briefly go through the, the dollar again. <clears throat> so just make it clear, dollar at 101.03. Uh, a couple of things we need to look at here. If it closes under 100, be real careful. 90, under 99s in the next uh, week and a half, that's going to be very negative. But it could chop, chop, chop with lower highs and lower lows and even have a bit of a bounce. That will allow gold to have a bit of a breather at that peak D. But if you're looking at the GDX, it's only in leg. It's at peak B today with that big move up, big move down in gold and do in the dollar. Gold has not been able to push the gold miners over 23.35 for leg B. So remember, I'm treating this as a counter trend rally in the um, counter trend rally in gold. Because I, at this point, I still have to think that the dollar is the main thing. I'm going to be talking more about dollar higher and our goods being sold at higher prices. Just as Japan's yen went to higher highs in the 1980s, as the Toyota and other Japanese products just screamed through the roof, couldn't get enough of them yet to put down a deposit. Think about this, of $1,000 to be able to book your Toyota Camry. And when it came in, if it came in in red and you wanted white, toughies. You had to go back on the list.
that mentality cost them, especially when they wanted it. Didn't they buy Rockefeller Center right at the top? But anyway, let's get on with our story. And we were looking at now the TLT. So gold. So I hope that helped you. Different time frames. Uh, the GDX. I did a GD, GDXJ. So GDXJ is in the same <clears throat> In the same up move in the month in the weekly chart, but it's already gone to an E. So although sometimes the junior mine is really powered to the upside in percentage terms, look, it's taken an extra bit of momentum to get each one to go to higher highs. So it's now in E. It's ex it, it's extended in in the letter name, but if you're looking at GDX, it hasn't even made a peak B. So that's that says to me in the next day or two we've got to be careful. There might be a pullback. In the dollar, as the uh, in in the gold, as the dollar has just a rebound from that trend line. But my thinking here is that the dollar is probably going to make lower highs and lower lows. All right, and not deep ones yet. So, thank, oh, Greg, I hope that helped you. Let's go. The next question is a lot of put buying in the IWM. <clears throat> you know, the weekly put buying of the IWM is seeing. I'm sorry, the weekly chart of the IWM is seeing the MACD hold well. But the stochastic's taking quite a dive. It's still at 85%, very good. My thinking is it will take out. Uh, you see this low right here of on the second, the week of the second of December at 130.29. I think we're going to get there. Um, I'm not sure yet of the timing. Now I have to do this because yes, it's a question that's come in. I'm trying to deal with those questions. BKX. I keep doing this every day. Why? Because tomorrow, Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, a whole bunch. I think Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan, a whole bunch of banks are going to give give earnings. Some of them pre-market. I think some of them maybe after the market closes. My question is: Is this distribution? Has there been a, a, a really uh, strong, I'm going to take this rectangle formation, which obviously failed. It wasn't the one that we were looking at. It could still be later on. But right now, this is the rectangle formation that's of importance. Is this distribution as the MACD just remember the, the fast moving average of the green line this is what I taught in my, my classes really represents the price when all of a sudden the Fast moving average, the nine period differential, which is looking at the last close, the most emphasis on the last close, so as to break down, yet the price holds up in a way that's very bullish. If you're looking at a kite or a balloon and it's just stuck at this level, right, uh, 40 feet, and you've got your string and you're holding and the wind comes up. And then the wind just dies down and the string starts to flap around. But the kite or the balloon is still staying at that level. The big question is, if the wind comes back up because you're holding a string with only 40 feet of string, will it not go to a higher high, but just use energy all the time? Or will it just break out like a balloon and push higher? That, of course, is my theory. That's not Bernoulli's theory or anything. But I, that's really the big question here. I'll talk about it when we get back. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will 
will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. All right, question about uh, Hess, H-E-S. Where did that go? Didn't I type Hess? No, I typed into the den. That was wrong. H-E-S. Here we go. Hess is Hess Corporation. Be careful with Hess Corporation. This is the pattern that I've been looking at. Peak C1 is uh, um, trading at 58.04, down 380. Is it a short? You know, remember yesterday we were looking at the uh, oil service. I think they part of the that kind of the oil Hess Petroleum. Um, oh boy, it didn't look that good yesterday under the nine period moving average. Now it's going to try for 55. Oh, I'll make it real simple. A close below 55.45 is a 200 period moving average and the simple moving average. A close below 55 would suggest that the arch formation has to test the wick of this candle, or at least the body to the wick of this candle of the 2nd of December that opened at 53.11. So, uh, not the wick, the body, the, the body, down to the body. So that means that if it does that, if it's still weak, by Tuesday of next week and it's starting to go to the 54s, you have to be really careful. Now, I don't know, should you ask, is it a short or a long or just an analysis? Um, okay. Um, the XLE. All right, we'll put it together with XLE. You just wanted to get a feel for that. Uh, XLE has made a peak F top in the weekly. I'm sorry, in the daily at 78.45 on the 12th of December. It's made a peak E. And on Friday, I'll know if it closes deep down at 74.45 now, if it closes in the 73 to 72 level by tomorrow afternoon, uh, the way it's going, it certainly could do that. That gives me a peak E in the month, in the weekly chart legs C in the monthly, and I would suggest to you that you watch very closely because 70 has to hold on XLE. That's the S&P Select Energy Spider. Now, if there's a reversal, you want to see 77s, and you want to see it by, today, you want to see it by the 19th, 20th of the month. Why do I say 19th, 20th? Because right here, Okay, finally, the 50-period moving average is proving its worth. Good. It's sitting right on that for two days in a row. You want to see use the nine-period moving average, make a V-shaped formation, try to tackle the long-legged candle of the 3rd of January, which has a high of 76.81 and a low of 75.36. That's the way I would look at it. At this point, the nine-period moving average is lower. It's not good. The MACD is very poor, and the stochastic had a slight positive divergence, but today's down move is just not good, down 40 cents. So XLE is... Shaky right now. The weekly chart is going to tell me it's already in a sell mode in the daily. I'm thinking it might even go to a sell signal on the on the month on the weekly. Let's see what happens by the end of the day. Um, next question was KBH. Oh, great! Thank you for reminding me about that. I meant to look at these. Uh, these are the home builders. KBH. Oh my! Why did I lose my notation here? Look. Weekly chart is A, B, C. You can just do this so quickly sometimes in the Chapman wave. Look for the left side low bar of consequence, and you go peak A, peak B, P, 
pig C, pig D. And you put a little plus sign on because I haven't got any other signals. The MACD is holding steady. The stochastic's down at 60%. That's not good. It's now under the weekly nine period moving average. I think that the um, Humboldt is going to have a bit of a problem with the higher rates here. That's the way I'm looking at it. So, so far, it has the same pattern as the XLE in the daily. 1521 is the 200 period moving average is at 15.80 down 80 cents kbh kb homes and all i can say is it's the same story it has to within a week of a week's worth of trading so that's six trading days it needs quickly to get to 16.50 actually it needs to get to 16.75 if it's able to do that it's saved the day i don't think it's going to be able to i think that it's made a, a short to intermediate term top and we can look at the xl the uh, HGX, which is the Philadelphia housing, so that's the same chart pattern. Testing the 200 period moving average support, uh, not looking that great. All right, so um, I'm I'm a little skeptical here, and my, my bias is regard. I think that the move from November with Trump has kind of gone through its whole phase. Now it's all hope. There's very little substance there. There can't be substance. He hasn't, he's not even in office. So I'm suspecting that this is the reality phase and this is a digestive phase that we're looking at now. Just to try to be practical about the whole thing. Uh, GT wants to know a lot of put buying in the IWM. Yeah, we just did that. So I, I told you with the I, IWM. IWM is the Russell 2000. It's 133.84. If it takes out that support, I'm just, I think I'm going to say it again. One. A close under 132, we are wrong mouse, <laughs> a close below, well, a close below one, the, I long, we're out of this, I don't know why I forgot to put the out of this long uh, position here, yeah, let's just get that, get rid of that, we're done with that. Um, 130.29, so a close below 132 starts to set up the chance that it could go down a little deeper. Question about IBB. Um, Relist in the den. Baz, if you have time, please give your opinion on the IBB given the comments by Donald Trump yesterday at his news conference. Thanks. So, this is very interesting. It went to a leg D. Yesterday's actually created the peak D. I've been talking about this as just making arch formations. A lowercase h goes to a lowercase m, and that we're just at a point where I think we're very close to resistance. And I said, where was the resistance? It's on this candle here, 288.20. What was the high two days ago? 287.17, within a point of that high. So now what I think is happening is there's once again there's there's a reality, and the reality is that the monthly chart of the IBB the iShares, NASDAQ, Biotech, ETF are still very poor. So watch that. And I'm just saying um, above 281, something else is going on. It's going sideways. And below 274, below 274, it can go deeper down and make that Eiffel Tower straight up, straight down. I'll do a little bit more in a moment. I want to go to Rich in Portland, Oregon. Rich, I didn't want to leave you out there in the cold as I did the other day. How are you? Fine, Basil. Thanks for uh, taking my call. My pleasure. Uh I'm uh, looking at ABX, and uh, based on what you've been talking about, uh, is this something, it, it just doesn't seem to have gotten any traction. Well, 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 uh, it, it doesn't seem to have traction um, in the larger context, but on a percentage basis, going from 14 to 1750, that's a big percentage. So let's just put that in perspective. Going from 23... 47, the high in July of uh, 2016, down to the 14, 13 level, that you're correct. So it hasn't really gone anywhere. But I'm looking at these. You see, ABX, which is uh, Barrick Gold, and they used to be called American Barracks or something. Anyway, uh, Barrick Gold um, trading at 1716. Do you have a position in this? Yes. Yeah. Okay, and your position is lower down, but on a percentage basis, it isn't such a big deal yet, considering the move in gold. Is that really what you're saying? Yes. Okay, so what I'm going to say to you is this. Hold, hold ABX, because the weekly chart technicals for the very first time have actually improved enough to say that the 200-period moving average of 18.22 will become a target in the weekly chart if it's able to get above 17.50, which is peak C on the daily chart. 
The MACD is very strong. Stochastic is good at 82%. What I'm really looking at is I love the expansion. I, you know, I spent all weekend trying to figure out, I should have asked Dave, Dave White, what if this is called beta, theta, or whatever it is, when the distance between the fast moving average and the slow moving average expands like this as it has in the, in the stochastic. I like, are you able to hold on or do you have to yeah. go? Yeah. You can hold on. All right, I'll talk a little bit more about ABX because a lot of people are asking about the gold. So let's do this. I'll be right back. Dow's down 168. S&P's down 17. And um, we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Learn how to trade options with Swim Lessons. Brought to you by TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim. Next on TFNN. Hi folks, we're with Rich in Portland, Oregon, and we're going to look back into ABX, and at the same time, I'm looking at the GDX. GDX is just holding so well, it's not really breaking out, and to me, that is part of a, a high-level consolidation. Let's hope that it stays as a high-level consolidation. So I'm just going to say to you, I would keep the core position on ABX. If you get a little bit nervous about it, what you can say is if it goes to a leg D above 17.50, Put a stop on a part of your position um, at about to 17.51. So you could make it at about 16.98. You can say, hey, if it get, do, I'd make it a mental. I wouldn't make it a physical stop. If it just pulls back to that level, say, okay, now what, what is that weekly chart looking at? I don't want to see 16.30 or 16.10 at any point in January in, the, in ABX or a pullback to the nine period moving average in most of these gold areas. Right now, this is acting well in an area that a lot of people thought wouldn't work and it's working now. So I suspect stay with it. Now, where would you add to it? If it does pull back 
and the and gold and the dollar just has a bit of a bounce, only a bit of a bounce, and gold actually holds quite firm but doesn't drop too much on that bounce. Then what I'm going to say to you is you could even add to the position, although ABX is probably not one of the better looking ones, it's good looking. There are a couple of that are a little bit better, but in the meantime, I would think about whether I want to add to it on any pull, mild pull back to about the 16. 87, 1675 level. So it happens in the next two days. Maybe you want to call me and we'll look at it again. Right now, hold it. I think it's the right area for this particular phase. Hope that helped you, Rich. Yes, it does, Basil. Uh, I had one other quick question. Yes. You were talking about the XLE just a little bit ago. Uh, yes. What would you have to see in the XLE for you, before you would go in to buy, say, the ERY? Okay, and the ERY is the, I believe that that is the long, oh, that's the bear side. Oh. Um, or would you just avoid that altogether? You know what? Because my bias right now in just looking at the area is to say slightly lower highs and slightly lower lows. I'm not sure that you've got the best entry on shorting it and also my weekly chart, ooh, it's a really, you know what, I'm going to use the XLE. If the XLE has a little bit of a bounce and it can get to 75.75, it's at 74.46 right now, 75.75, and then pulls back a little bit, just a little bit from 75.75 to about 75.30, you could start a small position as almost an experiment because I'm looking more at time than price. So I don't think that you want to get too carried away. In fact, at this particular point, I could be wrong about this. I think the best entry point has been missed. Now it's a little trickier, trickier because of the risk reward. All right. So I, that's all I can say. Hope that helps you. Thanks, Basil. Thank you very much for calling. So, folks, don't forget, Larry's uh, webinar tonight. Now, I want to do a couple of things real quickly. I want to talk about the VIX index. Now, one of the re we had a VIX index yesterday. gave us a bit of a profit. I tried to get it this morning. Just missed it. It actually isn't. The trading vehicle is not moving as well as it should. Uh, it, it's up. There's no question about it. But I thought it would be quite a bit higher. It's not even as high as it was yesterday. So what I'm looking at here is the VIX index at 1232. Let's make it real simple. If by the end of the day there is no rally of consequence and the market is pulling back, regardless of the bank stocks and all that tomorrow, we might have seen it might be a sell the news situation. Who knows in the bank stocks? The VIX index is key. If the VIX at 1231 right now starts to hit towards 12. 65 and then all of a sudden you're looking at 1285 and then suddenly you're hitting 13 this market is not going down 200 points it's going down 250 points but if all of a sudden later on in the day the vic starts to pull back under 12 and the dow is now only minus 135 s p now only minus 14 minus 13 that could say you know what everyone's going to be waiting for tomorrow with the x with the xlf with the bank news so um, shorting right now, it's a little tricky. We'll just watch the volatility index. We'll talk more about it tomorrow. We'll have a, a bit of a class tomorrow on the VIX index, what we can watch, etc. Thanks for being here. Have a great day. I'll be back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. This is TFNN.